Why doesn't God just annihilate sinners? Remember I told you that some Christians um, are resistant to the idea that hell is eternal. And so what they will argue is that people, we okay, we get God needs to punish sin. So what we think hell is, is that they will get punished for a certain period of time, and then they, they're not going to get into heaven. They, they can't get into heaven, but they will just cease to exist. They'll be annihilated. All right. Now, there are different views of annihilationism. That's kind of the purest version. There are some people that just say, well, it's really more of a naturalist view that um, that we, we're all basically mortal. And so whether you're a believer or not, you just you cease to exist at death. Again, that's not really a Christian view. That's a naturalist view. Um, there's others who say that, well, we're all born and we're all inherently mortal. Um, but then what God does is for those who are believers, he grants them immortality. So we, we're not immortal beings by nature. We don't become immortal until God gives us that. And so if he hasn't given you that, then at the end of your life, you just cease to exist. Um, neither one of those is a Christian view and consistent with the Christian um, theology for the fundamental reason that neither one of those involves punishment for sin, right? That both of those, if you just cease to exist at death, then what about the sins you committed during life that went unpunished? Well, they never got punished. So those are not viable options for a Christian. There are Christians who believe in the, the more pure form of annihilationism I described, but I think there's two problems with it. Number one, I think it's unreasonable. And I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. I mean that literally, just rationally speaking, if you think it through, there's there's a, a, a problem there. There's a logical problem there. And it stems back to what I said before of the fact that of the gnashing of teeth, that people continue to sin in hell. Well, if people continue to sin in hell, then and they keep racking up this proverbial debt, so to speak, then let me just ask you a very simple question. When exactly is the right time to annihilate them? When, when do you reach that point when they have paid the price for all their sins and can therefore be annihilated while God's justice is still satisfied? It never happens. You never get there because they're continuing to sin. They're continuing to gnash their teeth at God. And if they're continuing to gnash their teeth, they're continuing to sin, then they never reach a point where they have paid the penalty for all their sins and can therefore justly be annihilated. All right. So I think there's that logical issue with annihilationism right there. And the other problem I have with annihilationism is I do find it to be unbiblical. All right. Uh, in other words, I think there are plenty of passages in the Bible that contradict it. I mean, we've already seen some tonight where that describe hell as being eternal, the fire of hell being eternal. A lot of scriptures decide, uh, to describe people's punishment in hell as being never ending. Um, Isaiah 66, 24 is another one. Mark 9, 43 is one. I, I don't have those on the screens because the one I have on the screen, I think, is just absolutely definitive. There's no way of getting around this one, folks, in my mind. And that's Matthew 25, 46. And this is part of the sheep and goats judgment, where Jesus is talking about the end times, right? Separating the sheep on one side and the goats on the other. And he says this, then they, then they will go away, meaning the goats, then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. That The word in Greek that is being used and translated here as eternal is the same in the, both times it is used in this verse. The exact same Greek word is used to say some will go to eternal punishment and others will go to eternal life. If the life is eternal, as I think we all agree it is, heaven is eternal, then the punishment, logically speaking, biblically speaking, must also be eternal. They are described literally the exact same way. To try to support annihilationism, you have to look at this verse and say that even though the exact same word is used to describe both states, that they mean different things. One is really eternal, and one is not. And I don't think that can be biblically supported.